from the morning reading. Spider, diamonds, QQQ, form hammer. Starboard letter catapults M, plus 8%. Oil falls to new lows. Six of nine sectors moved lower on Monday. XLY, XLP, and XLK were the strongest sectors, while XLE was the weakest sector. Oil falls minus 2.03 to a new multi-year low at 31.13. Breath strengthened as decliners led advances 1.86 to 1 on the New York Stock Exchange and 1.56 to 1 on the NASDAQ. Through Friday's close, stocks in the S&P 500 were down an average of 22.5% from their respective 52-week highs. Mid-cap stocks, which make up the S&P 400 index, were down an average of 26.5% from their 52-week highs. And small-cap stocks were the worst of the bunch with an average decline of more than 30% from their 52-week highs. With everyone focused on the S&P 500's 10% decline from its intraday high last May, the majority of stocks in America are already in their own bear market. A, an examination of 37 ETFs representing markets across the world, only Belgium and Ireland of the well-developed markets were not in downtrends. And can we really legitimately blame all this on China? Obviously, there seems to be much more going on here than just the recent headlines from China. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 7.09 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of January the 12th, 2016. Remember that on the YouTube, you can have a free subscription to the channel and be alerted to new content being published. Give the video a few minutes to be published for the video to be available in high definition. And that can be important in seeing some of the charts. Click on the setting button to choose the high definition playback level. In this same area, you can also control the speed of the playback. I routinely listen to videos at about 1.5x of the recorded speed. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this, this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the morning report, and things were a little brighter last night, and indeed of the markets, we've got all four of the U.S. broad market indices are nicely up. The S&P is up about 15 points at the time of this cut, or about three quarters of a percent. Russell, a little bit weaker, but still up nicely at about 0.4 of a percent. NASDAQ's up almost 1%. And the Dow, similar to the S&P, is up about three quarters of a percent. Crude oil down about a third of a percent. Euro down about a third of a percent. Bonds down about half a percent. And gold down about 0.8 of a percent. Mixed action overseas in China up about 0.2 percent. Hong Kong down about 0.9 percent. Japan down big, down 2.7 percent. Germany up big, up 2.24 percent. And the United Kingdom also up very nicely at about 1.5 percent. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today to be aware of, we have FOMC member Fisher speaking um, already spoken early this morning. Wow, 5.30 a.m. Wow, very, very early on that one. So I'm not sure what impact that may have had. Um, we have Jolt's job openings out today during market hours, so be aware of that. And then coming up tomorrow, we have the usual weekly crude oil inventories. We have a 10-year bond auction. And that looks to be about it. So fairly quiet both today and tomorrow. Not an awful lot there to get excited about. In terms of current market conditions, boy, has this area been rocking of late. You had the short-term VIX at a 24.21, so relatively high. SKU very high at 142. IV percentiles are mid-range for the year, but certainly much higher than they were, you know, even a two or three weeks ago. Uh, S&P at a 44, Russell 44, 
NASDAQ 45, and Dow 47. In terms of the current number of standard deviation moves, we had none put in yesterday. Things are seemingly starting to perhaps calm down a little bit. Um, we're not quite as radical as we were a couple trading sessions ago. Let's take a look at the charts. See what's going on of special interest. For the S&P yesterday, we did have a bit of a wick down there, though it's not really aligned with anything other than a round number. 1900, I suppose, could have been a cause of support. Um, there is something of fixation around numbers. There's nothing really powerful in and of itself about that area other than the round number. But anyhow, bottom line, we did have a reversal off that area yesterday on the SPX and ended up with a doji. Um, so we'll have to see where this goes today. We're way overdue for a bounce. And um, if you look at it, there is something of a falling wedge pattern. And we're looking probably to have something of a bounce off that. Of course, the big question will be, is that bounce just simply a, something of a bear flag pattern? And then we leg down. Now that we've gotten this close to the 1866 areas, um, 1870 area, I would expect another revisit of this area. It's just going to likely be a magnet. And um, there will probably be forces that will want to test that area and see if the bulls can hold it. And um, now that doesn't mean we go straight there, though. We could definitely see a bounce. We could see a multi-day complex pattern form um, before we come down and test that. And, of course, it's just a theory that we would test that area. We may never test it. We may just simply bounce back into the range and go on with that course. But I think the more likely scenario at this point is that we get something of a bounce and then a eventual retest of these lows, and that will be a big, major test. In terms of the other markets, let's take a look at the Dow. Dow actually put in a slightly positive day, but I'd still call this a very small body, perhaps larger than a um, doji. You could make a case for a bullish harami. So it's a potential reversal pattern there. Again, not really seeing anything in terms of, you know, why it would turn out there other than just simply exhaustion and the amount of move without any kind of significant bounce. Just perhaps exhaustion is enough. In terms of the NASDAQ, you also see that small body again, big wick. Again, a bounce off of seemingly nowhere. Now, it may be that the other market, the S&P, bouncing off the round number of 1,900 was enough to be able to pull these other indices up with it. And then the Russell, just flat ugly. This is um, yesterday uh, broke down through the last significant uh, support area that goes way back. And um, did have intraday reversal, though, and I'm not convinced that this bounced because it hit um, this area so much as that the S&P probably brought it back up. So we'll have to see just where this kind of bounce may lead, just how big, how vigorous, how wide the breadth is. And that will be one of the things to watch today is just how wide is the breadth. You know, in the morning reading, we often share about the breadth between the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, if indeed we're going to get a significant bounce and the bulls are, are certainly saying, hey, this is, this is where we're making our stand and we believe in values at this area, then we should have much stronger breadth and it shouldn't be just on the FANG stocks or something like that or just on the large cap, which is where most of the um, decent volume and price action has been of late. Uh, breadth outside the large caps has been woeful. So we'll see where this goes. Now, in terms of current volatility, uh, big reversal here. Now, this is the VIX futures. So we see today's action so far, and you can see we've had quite a reversal pattern here. 
we talked about when it got up over 20, that um, some eight out of the last 10 events, that had been the area of reversal. We actually spiked up a bit above that, touched the 25 area. But now we have what would seem to be a pretty clear reversal on that. And we could very well see something like this pattern here, where you very quickly come back down to the 18 area within a day or two if we do indeed get much of a bounce. The question will be is does it just come back down to 18 and reside there, which is an elevated area. Indeed, even 15 is elevated compared to average, but that seems to be the floor of late 15 and then 18. So that's a tell that the bears are not done and that they are ready to come looming back out of the woods at any time. If we actually start to see this get crushed and a true bullish leg forms and we start to make all-time highs, then we should see the volatility start to drop between this 12 to 15 area. First thing we're looking for, though, is to drop down here into the 18 area. So we'll see and where that is. Uh, VIX futures can definitely be a very important tell as to just how much fear there is in the market, what's being priced in, and how much the bears versus bulls are in control. And then let's take a look at bonds. Bonds have been basically in a sideways pattern throughout all of this process. These recent highs in bonds, and of course it's coming down in the inverse correlation to the broad market as the broad market recovers. But this is still largely in a pattern. It never really broke up to significant all-time swing highs, nor did it ever really break down in any kind of significant way. So bonds have stayed much more stable through this. And indeed, I think you could even argue that while volatility certainly went up um, for the amount of movement that we had, it, it really took until the very last of it before we saw any kind of real volatility come into play. Anything up over 20 um, only happened when we got to the very last of that down move, even though we had gone, I think it was something like 150 points. So um, rather tame um, pull down as opposed to last August, we saw this thing flush all the way up to 30 when price action came into this very same similar area. Um, you know, the, the volatility went flying from this you know, 13 and change area all the way up to about 31. This time we go from about, well, we'll call it 19 up to about 25. So uh, nowhere near the kind of response that we had had earlier in the year. In terms of the daily report, still very, very ugly here and lots of warnings. Phase five, in terms of intermediate term phase opinion, the break of horizontal and diagonal support, we're a long way from seeing significant healing from that. In terms of portfolio investor posture, those various mechanical systems, IBD status, market in correction, accumulation distribution, S&P score is an E, NASDAQ similar, also an E, GMI index, worst case zero out of six with a sell signal in place now since 1210. That author remains very happily 100% in cash. In terms of stock charts, decision points, scoreboard still retains very ugly in terms of the short term into the intermediate and also long term also mix until we get a stack of these time frames and these signals all aligned we will likely remain a market in transition and indeed the consensus of between all of these signals is that we're just that we're a very wide range over oh, about 200 point range between the high of the range and low of the range a market in transition a market that has yet to define, will it break out through the top and then leg up for another significant bull market leg, or will it break down and then fall into something more significant in terms of a bear market? Until we get outside one side or the other of this very large range, we will likely see these kinds of signals of a market in transition. 
In terms of intermediate term market posture, very bearish with the bearish sentiment line. And indeed, if you look at all four markets, very, very low scores, severely bearish. Uh, we do have some bullish clusters present. We did have all four of them with bullish clusters. Two of them ebbed off yesterday with slightly positive action. Uh, the Dow and the Russell still have bullish clusters present. We'll see if anything comes of that. In terms of the position sizing opinions, so we retain a very, very defensive 0% on the portfolio investor position sizing opinion. The volatility-based system is also firing at 50%. Hedge warning status remains a very elevated level three. That is the crash warning level that is saying that conditions are present for a significant down move. It's not a prediction or probability of that down move or how far we might go, but it is an elevation of risk that that could happen and it's certainly much more so than where we're lower in the scale. So keep that in mind. These are very, very, very poor conditions in which to initiate any kind of bullish trades. In terms of specific metrics, you can see a sea of red here, volatility-based, market in decline, sharp increase warning, VIX futures up over 18, our market in correction, our VIX uh, volatility ratio warning fired a day ago, and we now have had a close below, so that means that we are looking for reversal setups, and indeed, that seems to be setting up, so that seems to be giving us a tell, and um, seems to be showing signs, early signs of happening. Our VIX phase has been increasing, though, in the last um, 36 hours, would seem to be ebbing down. Skew very elevated, and about a seven-fold rate of normal probabilities of a standard to standard deviation move within the next 30 days. This has been quite elevated now for a couple of months. And indeed, we've had many, many standard deviation moves and two standard deviation moves within that time frame. So that certainly has been playing out as well. In terms of the current week out on the SPX, about 63 points. That's also quite elevated. More normal is probably more like 40. So that should tell you something as well. In terms of new highs, new lows, New York Stock Exchange, still another day, up over 1,000 new lows set in yesterday against very few new highs, very little for the bulls to point to there. In terms of the key intermarket risk aversion indicators, all five systems are flagging as risk off. And at a risk off status, that is clearly a warning. Fear and greed index, an 18. So we're getting down here into this extreme. It was 18 yesterday, so that is also um, setting up potentially at some point for its own reversal. Option income strategies, cover call strategies, put selling, all three special opinions are outside their acceptable windows to initiate new positions for novice traders. Um, if you do choose to take advantage of this elevated premium and VIX that is in the market, uh, just know that you're going to have elevated levels of delta movements and vega movements and not for the novice trader to be trading in. It's much more of a very, very nimble and well-capitalized, uh, more aggressive trader, more experienced trader. Sector specific, a sea of red here with only utilities holding up and indeed very defensive areas have held up the best in this recent price action. In terms of yesterday's percent change, consumer staples, discretionary, telecom, information technology, utilities you see are all the better performers. Most of those would go into the defensive camp. So when people were buying, they were buying things like utilities and consumer staples. They were not buying materials or energy which um, would be a far more uh, aggressive kind of posture. But still, even with utilities um, and these other defensives uh, being stronger yesterday, look at the five-day, one-day, three-month, even um, one year out. Many of these are doing very, very poorly. This is not a healthy bull market. So that should be enough for today. 
And let's see what we might want to talk about today in terms of special opportunities. Well, I've got to talk about my cover call mastery course. This has been uh, an enrollment here for a couple weeks now. Um, the first class is January the 30th. There is a hyperlink down here at the bottom. If you go to that hyperlink, you'll get a complete description of this course. Outstanding course for somebody who is new to stock trading, wants to develop a uh, rules-based trading system and learn how to screen stocks properly, do the fundamental analysis, the technical analysis, and then of course um, also get an introduction to the most basic of option strategies. But here we take this to a mastery level, put together a complete system, all the rules, exit strategies, etc. Um, this will definitely get you on the road to um, both working with stocks as an investor, but also enhancing those returns with um, options and actually to be able to have a more conservative position than owning the stock by itself. And that's one of the key things you always have to understand about the cover call. Uh, if you're willing to own 100 shares of Apple, you should love owning 100 shares of Apple in a cover call because your cost basis is actually lower. It's actually got less risk than owning those shares by themselves. So, um, but anyhow, bottom line, if you would like to register, get a registration form by sending me an email at steven at falconglobaltraders.com and that will get your registration form sent out to you to participate. By the way, both in-person and virtual attendees can take place uh, can participate with this course. We will be simulcast and we will be also uh, recording these sessions so everybody can participate whether you're in the Chicago western suburbs or not. If you find what you're getting from here is useful to your trading, subscribe to that YouTube channel. It's free. It gives you an update when the content has been posted. Like us on YouTube. Retweet us to your Twitter followers, to your stock Twit followers. All of that is greatly appreciated. Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review. Full disclaimers are at the hyperlink down here at the bottom. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning with the market preview from Falcon Global. Good trading.